Hello and welcome back to Devotions here at FCC. We are heading out of our Ancestry series, but I don't want to leave it quite yet. I hope that uh, taking the time to look through the lives of some of these people that are in the family tree of Jesus has been encouraging to you. It has been inspiring to you as well. Some of the stories that we've uh, heard before um, kind of just have been reminded in, in our memories, or, or, or we have memories of little dusty spots in our mind where we remember hearing those stories before. Maybe you remembered Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and the sacrifice on the mountain. Maybe you remembered Jacob and uh, the, the, the swindler and how he stole things from his family until he had to actually wrestle with God. Uh, some remembered Rahab and the spies in Jericho. Not many had a, a memory of the story of Jehoshaphat and his unwinnable war. Maybe you had heard uh, the story of Ruth, but you didn't quite recognize how loving and redemptive her story really was. But this Sunday, we heard a story that so many of us know. It's the story of Mary and Joseph, and their part in the family tree of the story of Jesus. And we talked on Sunday about the role that Mary, in particular, played. But then we also talked about that moment when Joseph and Mary couldn't find 12-year-old Jesus, um, having left him behind in Jerusalem. Remember, uh, Easton kind of got us into that story. And uh, can, can you just take a moment to consider how overwhelmingly anxious and nervous you would be if you couldn't find Jesus for like three days? I, I remember a moment that my daughter Emery was, uh, she was a wanderer. Um, I, I've got a lot of stories about her wandering off in one direction or another. It, it happened in unknown neighborhoods. Uh, it happened at a pool. Um, she thought that we were going to be swimming in one pool and we were going to swim in another pool and she didn't go to the right pool. Um, one of the most memorable ones was at the old Daw Hairs report, uh, department store here in, in town at the, at the mall. Um, Daw Hairs was not here long after we got to town, but it, it sat where I think, if I remember right, where uh, Belts Outlet is now in, in town mall. For, for Daw Hairs, it was a pretty small store but one of the anchor stores in the mall. Stacia and Emery and I were there. Um, Cam may have been in school by that time. And so Emery was just like two or three years old. And we were looking through some of the clearance racks as we were known to do. And suddenly uh, we looked around and, and there was no Emery. She was gone. And she, she wasn't with either one of us. And we each checked with each other. She, she wasn't in the center of the closed racks where I used to hide out when I was a kid. And She wasn't at the front of the store and no one saw her head into the mall. And we actually found a a ladder that was in the store and got on top of the ladder to get a bird's eye view of the whole store. Still nothing. Then one of the salespeople found her. She was in one of the dressing rooms. She was sitting down playing with her doll, not bothering anyone. And she didn't even escape in an effort to be funny or to, to cause our hearts to stop. She just looked for a place to sit down and play. And that was the first spot that she found. As far as she knew, there was nothing wrong. There was nothing out of the ordinary with that particular choice. We were frantic. She was unfazed. Now, go back to Jerusalem with Mary and Joseph and Jesus. They had misplaced Jesus for three days. And I'm not sure that they knew that he'd been gone that long, but they they felt the weight of it when they realized that he'd been gone. But it wasn't just losing their kid. I mean, this was God's son. This was the one who was going to set things right for the whole nation, as far as Mary and Joseph knew, and they lost him. Frantic would only begin to describe their feelings, but we can sometimes be bothered by Jesus' response to Mary. When Mary and Joseph found him, they they asked him how he could scare them like that, but he seemed unfazed, and he, he didn't know that he was lost. Like Emery, he didn't get lost or feel lost on purpose. He was not trying to scare them. He was not trying to mistreat them. He was doing what someone close to God would do. He says, why were you searching for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? He was right where it made sense to him in all of the world for him to be learning and studying and asking questions about the world and about God and about our understanding of ourselves and our universe and our God. I, I hope you know after Sunday that we have some amazing students who are growing deeper and deeper and deeper in love with Jesus. They are wanting to know more and they are wanting to do more. And we should not keep them from growing. And we should not keep them from um, 
becoming closer to Jesus. And we should not be surprised when their quest for a deeper relationship with God causes them to lead us and inspire us too. Mary and Joseph saw it in Jesus. We saw it a little bit too on Sunday. The next generation wants to know him more and grow in their understanding of him. And we should not be surprised when they lead us in faith. What was happening with Jesus at the temple was exactly what made sense to Jesus. He wasn't trying to scare anybody. He wasn't trying to misbehave. He wasn't trying to do the wrong thing. He was simply doing what his heart was leading him to do. Why would you think I wouldn't be here trying to learn more and more about God? I think we may be selling this generation short to think that some of them, in fact, many of them, don't have that same attitude in their relationship with God. May that inspire us today. Let's pray. God, thanks uh, for our our students and uh, for their inspiration to us, for their uh, teaching uh, that they shared on Sunday. God, may we even look at the the story of 12-year-old Jesus and, and not be bothered by the flippant manner in which he approached his parents who were scared to death that they'd lost him. But may we recognize that he didn't know there was any reason to be frantic. He didn't imagine that there was any um, opportunity to, to cause a problem because he was simply doing what he felt like he should be doing. And we don't always get that right when we're kids. But when our kids do get it right, when they want to be about God's work, when they want to go and be a part of church or part of youth group, when they want to study God's word, when they want to read the Bible, may we be encouragers to them. May we do everything that we can to, to, to move all the other stuff out of their way so that they can fall more and more in love with you. God, thanks for this story and for this series that we've been in. Prepare our hearts for where you will lead us the rest of the way this year. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I hope that you'll be with us on Sunday, 9.30 and 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock online. It's going to be a great Sunday. Uh, Maybe click like and share on this devotion to get it off to somebody else that may want to hear it. And uh, we hope that you'll be with us. The devotions will continue next week. Uh, I've got a busy weekend ahead for me, so please be in prayer for our family with all kinds of transitions going on. Great things, good things, uh, but there's some motions involved as well. And so just be, uh, lift us up in prayer if you would, and we will see you Uh, on Tuesday for devotions. Have a great one.